wants to do the conversion himself, and obviously he's been busy. Only available on VHS? I, uh, <laughs> it's on DVD. <laughs> <laughs> it's on Laserdisc. <laughs> Floppy disk. Betamax. Um, Chris is saying that he thinks all the white, the yellowish stuff we're seeing are indeed remnants of dead sponges. Um, he is saying that he thinks that we may miss the sponge that he was looking to study back when we were sampling that first difficult sponge. We were supposed to sample one that we didn't? Well, he's saying that there was one that he's been writing about in his manuscript about, about the right, but oh. it's on our target list, so I didn't see oh, it. Oh, you missed it? Oh. Yeah. Sorry, dude. Sorry about that, Chris. We'll try to keep an eye out for it in the future. You know what to look for now? Um, not quite sure, but I'm sure Chris will tell me if we do see it. Okay. We should give Chris a button that just turns on like a red flashing light yeah. in here or just something. Like the, just give like him the, one of those touch screens we have in here, just put him in his office. I like the right, bat Chris? signal. <laughs> um, yeah. I wonder if Chris, I don't think he has an account. We could put him on SPL. He's got a seven second delay though. Oh, we'll be long gone by then. Uh, he's saying we didn't need to sample it. He was just saying he's commenting that he's describing it in his manuscript. Uh, that copy. is really cool. Hopefully, maybe we got some captures of it that he can use or something. I got quite a few captures Bridge while down. we were collecting okay. it, so maybe yeah. somewhere in the background might get good. I may have grabbed some of the stills too. Could you please do a move one zero meters, bearing two three five. I was talking with Daniel uh, yesterday about. Um, so he's been tracking, as as OET has been doing, um, he's been tracking the the publications that have come out of Nautilus data, and it's it, you know it, the no. past few. Can we get a zoom on the yellow stuff, please? Which one? Just the yellow stuff in general. Oh yeah. Uh, and we've started to see over zoom. Um, people who are not associated with Nautilus, like who have not sailed, starting to use data from uh, MCZ and, uh, and, and, you know, multi-beam and video data. And, uh, and that's kind of like one of the measures of, of success is that, you know, we're providing data to the general community and not Coming only out. people who have <coughs> been on Nautilus. Before so that's, it's really great to see that uh, yeah. it's, you know, it's useful to people who are here saying, hey, I want to see this, but it's also useful to people who are you know, have have no connect, direct connection to it. Chris is confirming all the yellow stuff is indeed dead sponges. I saw a paper recently published that included some of the work I was on expedition um, on. Also, can we get a zoom in on this fan coil right here on those little bunches? On the what? In like what? On those little pink bunches. You like can see throughout. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So in like 2012, so it takes a long time to. Oh, are those like? Are those tiny, tiny, tiny overoids? Yeah. Oh, wow. This. What is that? Looks like a conch snail. Snail. I can't really tell. Or an it egg like, sac. It might be a barnacle too. And I see a shrimp in there as well. I have more zoom to give, but we're uh, coming yeah. in, coming out real close. quick, just to get our bearings. All right. All right, going back in. Huh. Yeah, I have no idea. What is that? It looks like is a it long. Is another? Mm -hmm. Looks like it's part of the core. Yeah, like it's attached. Uh, it's super interesting. I've never seen that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chris has no Chris idea. Chris is saying a giant <laughs> uh. So oh, yeah. we might want to uh, keep that in mind as we look at this. Huh. Yeah, I have no idea. We're pulling away, which is better than in. But what? Coming out. Uh, that's weird. Yeah, it's fine. When we're that zoomed in, uh, <laughs> Oops. Oh. I have to make s gross focus adjustments on even the smallest vehicle movement. So yeah, better, feel, up. better feel f than the pilot's doing where the vehicle <laughs> is when we're zoomed in that far. Oh, 
Wow. I wonder if there was like an old, the current used to go through there and then it just, it's not, I don't know. There's so, I feel like there's That's more weird. dead. There should be like a current going through there, yeah. but there should be on both sides, it's only uh -huh. on one. Yeah. I'm looking at the substrates and one of those situations was dark and light substrates again. So I'm wondering if that is something to do with recruitment. Maybe the wow. black one has better wow. grab to it. And Chris is saying this is a spectacular sight, and congrats for finding it. Concur, uh, concur on the spectacular. Not congratulating myself. <laughs> Just sitting here. I was I was checking on uh, the mapping uh, that Derek and the mapping team were doing when this started to rise up, and it just kept coming up. Wow. So the word abundance has been used um, to kind of describe this beautiful ecosystem. In Hawaiian, we have a word called aina momona. Aina momona meaning that very rich and um, abundant place, which could be on the land or in the ocean. So good word to describe this is aina momona. Uh, another one would be the word you use to describe that sea star that had over gorged here. itself. Our eyes are like that. You remember that? The uh, it looked like it had eaten way too much. Uh, on the sea star, I wasn't squared it's, up on it. I think it's up there. Coming out a bit. There we go. Oh, there right it is. There. Star. Consuming. Predation event. Um. <laughs> Predation event. Yeah, that's not one of our target ones, mm. either Whoa. of those. We're but it's a really away. cool feeding of that. A wide little push. Bridge nav. This is a fantastic sight. Ship move this please, one zero purchase. meters, bearing two one five. Thank you. Whoa. Chris is commenting that this is unusual for its high density, that it has extremely high diversity as well. There's so much to look like in process. It's like overload. There's that matting material again. The sp dead sponges? No, the darker areas. Oh, those darker areas. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, being from Seattle, I'm tempted to call it moss. Mm -hmm. But it has that appearance. I feel like these are catching all of that would be right there maybe, I don't know. Hmm. Oh my gosh. And we note that we even have some that even made it to waypoint two and we're seeing all this. I know. Yeah. I know. So the trawling you're thinking is probably on top of the gear? It's, yeah, it would only be on top. Okay. They, they can't really trawl um, slo uh, steep slopes. Uh, if you, can you go down just a little bit real quick? Down? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm just curious, this, I don't think we've seen that here. Oh, uh, maybe we have. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think we're good. Okay. So maybe, so maybe we were right about it being a dike. If yeah. Okay. Well, that makes us feel. That makes me feel better. 
So Hannah, can you explain dike? I know there's dike rock on the islands of Hawaii mm -hmm. that are real important for like water, mm -hmm. um, oh, kind of oh. water reservoir type things. But I'm, I'm curious what the dikes, what are some of the benefits um, underwater? So I guess dike, it, it can happen on land or under and underwater. And it's basically these magma, like magma pushing itself in linear lines, probably filling up crevices if it's re, re erupting, if it's active again. But um, dikes are at an angle and there's also another thing called sills, but those are parallel to the, to the bedding. So a lot of what we're gonna see is dikes. I will be very shocked if we see a sill. I don't think we will, but these dikes, I, I just wonder if they were a secondary feature. They usually are a secondary feature to the, the rock that it intrudes on. Mm -hmm. So that means there had to be multiple um, eruptions on this seamount. So when you do, would you kind of say like, if you see dikes, that means that there have been multiple eruptions? Yes, I would say not, I guess not eruptions, but um, activity. Yeah, at, at least activity and flows. Mm -hmm. And we definitely don't want a dike. We do not want a rock from a dike because that's going to be a younger age than its surrounding mm, rock. True that. So you want to make sure when we get a sample that it, it's not from a dike. <laughs> so is there not interest in aging but when that dike might have formed, though? Well, that's what I was thinking. Maybe you want a beach. Maybe I was like, we could <laughs> get two, but just like in our notes, write down that it's a, a dike sample. Yeah. So that when we Cause, get cause the aging, age, that could be important too. Yeah, that could be. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> like I'm like having these realizations like real time. <laughs> I'm so would out loud. It, you would need to be have fractured off yeah. of the dike in order mm -hmm. to collect it as a sample. Yes. So could you look at it visually to determine the difference between a dike rock mm -hmm. and yes. another like a sill or other type of yes. rock? Yes. So I don't know if you noticed, but like sometimes I'll like draw double like parallel lines, like mm -hmm. highlighting a rock like that. And um, that's usually we're pointing out the dikes. So usually, now I'm really curious to see if we can uh, take one of those samples and get an, I would love to get an age of that. <laughs> that and the original, that would be really cool. So there was a question Rich from now. a viewer regarding argon, argon Kurt. dating. Oh yeah. Which lab um, do we, is gonna Please be do a hit move, one zero doing meters those bearing kind of two two five. So, what the instrument that is used for argon argon dating is a mass yeah, spectrometer yeah, yeah. and the one that i use is actually from dr conrad who has been on previous nautilus expeditions so we use his lab at unlv so university of nevada las vegas and i actually went there for a week to prep my nautilus samples and we did a lot of leaching with um hcl and hno3 and that's to clean the minerals from the alteration that we see in the rocks. And then what we'll do after we leach is that I'll go through a microscope and hand pick them with literally, I'm not, like think of a paintbrush and think of one single strand from a paintbrush. <laughs> and I use that one single strand to pick out these uh, mineral grains, because again, they're ranged from sizes to 0 0.212 microns to 0 <laughs> 0.425 microns. So it's really, it's, I, I, very specific. yes, it's very specific. <laughs> and so I basically go through this little vial and I turn it around multiple times and I just keep like taking out any of them that have um, altered. So imagine just like a transparent crystal and then in one of the like little divots, it's like a black, like a black, like a blackhead. Mm -hmm. It looks like a blackhead. Mm -hmm. And you do not want those grains because that blackhead shows a sign of alteration. Mm -hmm. So I would pick that out with the little paintbrush, like strand, 
and I would put it in a different like sample container for all the altered ones. So that when the irradiation process happens in the mass spectrometer and those high speed neutrons are hitting that mineral, that the alteration is not going to affect and um, cause a recoil or cause a a what is it a, not a failure but um basically a false age so that's why it's <laughs> that's kind of what the argon argon dating is mm -hmm. and also again argon is a daughter isotope of potassium and can so we get a zoom? can we get a zoom oh, yeah. on those bat stars there's just a bunch of them right here what, what things the bat what? stars just the Bastard. orange, you can see them. Orange, oh, on the corals? Oh, yeah. Please. Oh. They're all a bunch of basket stars just all over. I was just looking, I yeah, thought they were coral. Oh, oh, yeah, me too. Also, I'm loving this geology conversation I walked into. This has been great oh. listening. Yeah, it, it's me trying to explain wow, argon that. dating and like yeah. what I do with these samples before argon dating mm -hmm. at UNLV which is University of Nevada. Have you ever Vegas. seen an aggregation that dense? Thanks for sharing that, Hannah. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. It's, I, I mean, I loved hand picking. It was so, um, uh, it what is it, mind numbing? Yeah. Or like... Therapy? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I did a lot of deep thoughts and like deep thinking while like watching that, doing it. Kind of like waiting for a ship move five kilometers down. Yeah. I was just like... It was so fun. <laughs> there would also be like these like little like um, aquamarine crystals, and we had no idea what wow. they were. They weren't aquamarine. Almost like they're trying to get <laughs> no. inside. Oh, another one of those things on the tip the of the coral right there. Yeah. One of those bulbs. Oh, oh. You see it? Yeah. Are you talking about right there? Yeah. Yeah. I see it. Yeah. It's on the one behind it. Yep. Can't topaz sometimes oh. be like an aquamarine color? Uh huh. <coughs> nice but I, don't, I would be very shocked if that was yeah. topaz. Chris pointed but out was, that they, these corals are actually It was something that Dr. Feeding. Conrad didn't know. Hmm. And so I was like, what? The Thanks, right Chris. Hmm? How's the current right here? You pretty ripping. Put ripping. it under the mass spec and see what it is. <laughs> Which Who's way is it? <laughs> it's uh, not with my sample. So you can do it after. South. So I'm facing almost into it right now. So if I turn back to the west, it just like carries me. That way. Oh, gulch here. So I'm trying to kind of drag us that way over to this. Okay. It's like this. It's like straight down right here. Is that a massive sponge on the right there? Yeah. Oh. Is it a flat one? Yeah. Hmm. It's kind of below us though, huh? Mm -hmm. Is it on a stalk? Like we've seen so many different species. Yeah. I'm getting out of the box too. I saw, um, during the yeah. ship to shore, I saw there was like a really pretty red shrimp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was a good view. That was like <laughs> right at the beginning too. I was glad I got to show them. Did y'all see anything else really? Just uh, tons of biodiversity here. It's insane. Mm. I've never really seen a site quite like this. It's just covered everywhere. And it's like it's like multi-sectional, like going down and everywhere. It's definitely healthy food supply here. So, so far, have we taken uh, one sample during this dive? Yes. Uh, yeah, just yeah. one. Yeah. That sponge, yeah. But we have stopped and smelled the roses. Yeah. So the corals times. or sponges. <laughs> Bunch of I times. love it. Have we made it to like waypoint two yet? No. <laughs> we're, we're, we're so close. We're, we're, so, we're getting off the cliff from the lick of high pack. Mm -hmm. So, I think we should Ship be move, please, longer. One zero meters, bearing two, three, five. Thank you.
Are these other basket starfish? Yep, they are. Chris was telling that there are multiple species of Chrysogorgid here, and that bamboo corals have slowly kind of tapered off as we've moved up. Can sea stars also be filter feeders or no? Um, I think some can. Uh, most, I think mostly um, crinoids and brazingids are going to be more filter feeders that are echinoderms. Sea stars are primarily more like dominant benthic predators mm -hmm. than filter feeders. Okay. I was just curious because I'm thinking about those uh, basket corals that live on do they are they living on it or are they actually oh, the like, basket stars uh-huh um they're living on it but they're not firmly attached okay so they're not eating the coral that it's attached no on. they're only interested in the filter feeding okay so those okay so those are examples of thoughts mentalism thoughts how are we doing i think we're doing good Go ahead, Bridge. Uh, yes, looks good. Do what you need to do. Thank you. I'm just going to swing the heading around to yep, I got move it. off. Cause look at those corals in like a circle right there, it's really cool. And one of the ones that fit? I drew, it's like a shape of a spiral. <laughs> that is cool. It's really cool. Sebastian, are you talking about like on the right side? On the left. There's on the also left? on the right there is some yeah. turning there. It's exceptional. Especially that crack too. Mm -hmm. They're just maximizing their space, even though they're super close to each other, they're getting like maximum current, that little crap. That's really cool. So in a few minutes here, I'm about to hop off again for another ship to shore interaction. And I just want to explain to our viewers, um, Right now you're viewing um, our 24 seven live stream and you have the access of like dropping questions. But like if you have a group of students, if you have like a community where you just want to gather people to have a chance, we usually take about like 30 minutes and just kind of give like a one-on-one -on -one space to uh, connect. Um, that's available during the entire expedition season. 
Um, and there is on the Nautilus site, if you go to education, um, there are like three different things for you to look at, including free educational resources, information about the ship to shores, and then at sea programs like the one I'm doing, the Science Communication Fellowship. But sign up for Ship to Shores for sure. They're so much fun and really um, gives us a chance to kind of connect with especially our youth and like our future explorers, but also it can be like all ages. Um, and they're a really good time. So definitely sign up. We love doing them. And you can also request certain people or a specific role or a specific career if there's something specific that your students or your group is interested in learning about. Yeah, Tori. I do my first, well, I do my high school ship to shore tomorrow morning and I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to go talk to Tori about how to work. Because you work the <laughs> ship to shore. Oh my gosh. When you... When you're going, panel. I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, she's a professional. Yeah, she's really good she's at that. She's a pro. I've been practicing. Did we do one together, Mike? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was like <laughs> one of my first ones. That feels like forever ago. So that movie, it does feel like forever ago. That means you got to sign up for another ship, one. Uh, 16 meters. And one of the cool things about the ship to shore, because yeah, we are in I'm Hawaii, we do have the, um, the ability mm -hmm. to do Olelo Hawaii. Mm -hmm. We have um, Hawaiian language yes. speakers on. Practice. We have a Hawaiian language speaker on board. And we have access to uh, Hawaiian language educators um, on shore. So if you are a Kulakai Opuni, a Hawaiian immersion school, um, community event, um, be sure to go onto the nautiluslive.org website and sign up. It's really amazing for the youth, especially our um, local Kanaka Oivi youth, mm -hmm. to be able to see role models. You know, to see um, the options they have in regards to um, exploration on the deep seas. So check it out, yeah. sign up. Uh, we'd be happy to host you or your um, school. Yeah, and I'll say too, like I've been doing this morning, especially a few with like my own high school that I teach at and like the one I just did, it was really funny to watch students that I taught last year that did not know about me being out here, like look at the screen, like and as soon as it turned on, um, I could hear them be like, is this yeah, real? Yeah, the current's also pulling me <laughs> away. So it was so great. They had great questions. Back. And we love doing them. What's the funniest question you've been asked yet, so far? Um, funniest? I know yesterday, I wasn't on this one, but it was like Catalina, Daniel, and Kara. And they were getting asked questions about, it was like, they said they couldn't see the audience. They Bridge were just nap. typing in the chat, so they assumed that it was really young children being like, have you seen a kraken? You hope so. <laughs> have you seen a mermaid? Move, please. <laughs> One zero meters, bearing two, four, five. And I forget, something about penguins, like, any penguins? Any penguins. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think about, for me, I don't know. I just, like, love all the questions we get. They're always so sweet. Mm -hmm. And I love talking to younger students, especially. And people are just a lot a lot of them are curious just about shipboard life yeah you know a lot like, of questions about food. what are we doing yeah. like when we're not on watch and um so yeah. you know just those human element parts yeah and i definitely bring up like the cameras around the ship so like in this one in like a few minutes i'm about to bring up the control van and let them see y'all hanging out yeah <laughs> And that's an important part of what yeah. we do. You know, the exploration is very cool. The research is very cool. But if you don't disseminate that out and make it relatable to people, then, yeah, you know, that's what we want. We want people to relate to these places so they, you know, have that, that attitude of malama aina to care and take care of and steward these exceptional places. Yeah, and really quick before I hop off, like if you're interested in learning about any of the specific people on our watch or on our expedition, if you go to the nautiluslive.org website and you scroll down, you can see the people that are currently on watch. We all have little bios written. And then if you also just go to like the team page, you'll see everyone that's like on the ship right now on our crew. So it's really awesome. Check it out. And then be sure if you're doing ship to shores, like make the most of it. Request certain people that you're interested in hearing from and come with some good questions. But okay, I'm about to hop off. And I will be back. See you in a Bye. bit.
So I know we have a lot of people who um, have been following us for a while, but for those who haven't, um, Sebastian, could you kind of like call out some of these beautiful organisms that we're seeing right now? Yeah, of course. So you can see the guys with the little spirals there that kind of going with the flow. Those are chrysogorgids. Um, the little pink fans are hemichoralliums. Um, let's see. It's a little zoomed out, but I can see a couple um, crinoids. And let's see. There's like a lot of these smaller ones, the more flowy ones I mentioned, the crisis gorges. There's actually multiple species of insight here. So they're becoming slowly the more dominant one that we're seeing as we move forward. Um, I believe there was also the black corals we saw on the way. I see a couple of primnoids, the straight looking ones right there in the middle between the two crisis like gorges. Yep. Um, there's just in general so much to see here. The little red guy is a mushroom coral. Um, I'm not sure what the yellow one is, the small yellow one on the right. Don't have a super clear thing on it. There's some basset star right mm. there in the middle. Can we zoom on the yellow coral? This one? Please? Yeah. Let's, one second. All right, go for Zoom. Oh, it's just so tiny. Yeah. Pausing. Oh, sorry, the current's Ooh. really... Yeah, you're good. Around. You it work. I see a little red brittle star right there, too. It's going to be really oh, yeah, hard really to brittle. focus on, so if you want to still, grab it quick. I'm able to get it in the still camera, too. She's not zoomed in. Oh. I think it's an octoporal because that's a darker skeleton. Oh, yeah, black coral. Coming out. All right. Nice work. That's kind of an unusual color. Don't see a lot of those. Mm -mm. Full wide, little push. Full wide, little push. Could be a t shirt. What? Yeah. <laughs> So Chris is actually thinking this might be um, parazoanthid corals, maybe possibly Kula Manamana um, Haumea, the Hawaiian gold coral maybe. But I'm not quite sure specifically if that is Kula Manamana. It might be a little bit um, dull for it in terms of color. It's a little brighter usually. Bridge nav. Please do a ship move, one five meters, bearing two one zero. Two one zero. One five meters, bearing two one zero. Thank you. Yeah, that last move was not what I wanted. Yeah. They went that way instead of that way. That's why we're going. That's all right. It worked out. Quick question. What is the distance between the two lights used for measuring? Ten centimeters. One zero centimeters. Or about four inches. About the width of your palm. Oh man. Yeah, Chris confirmed that Kulamanamana is too shallow for it to be that. So, so it's definitely some other type dark of object to the right of the lasers. Dark object, right of the lasers. Yeah, I'm coming up on frame in. There you go. Back, 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 back. And back, 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 wolf, and up. And up. Looks like a diamond. Oh. So the um, Kula Mana Mana that um, Sebastian was referring to is the Hawaiian gold coral. Mm. Kula Mana Mana. 
It was a very valuable, precious coral back in the day that was heavily farmed and trawled for, for use in jewelry. Luckily, it's come out of a um, lot more conservation has gone towards piece? it and its type Maybe. and the Resume? general precious Maybe coral it industry. Broke off. Oh, it's just an oh. angular. Yeah. Uh, there it is. Yeah. See? Yep. Someone took a cube out. Yeah. <laughs> is it a gap or a just a different color? It's where the rock broke off. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I got it in the still camera, too. Full wide little bump. We're so close. Yep. <laughs> So a marine science class in Orlando, Florida wants to know what are our favorite words in the Hawaiian language? Anybody want to share? Oh, uh, sure. I have I have one, uh, and maybe you'll understand why it's my favorite word in the Hawaiian language, tutu. Tutu is a beautiful yeah. word. Can you tell us what that means? Sure. Ed? Tutu is grandmother, uh, and... Uh, uh, my tutu lived in Kahala for many, many, many decades and uh, was just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful woman who made famous mango chutney from the tree out behind her lanai behind the house. So I love the Hawaiian word tutu. Oh, gotta love our tutus. Anybody else want to share their favorite Hawaiian word? Um, I need more time, but obviously the front runner right now in my head is Mauna Kai, which is the oh, yeah. seamount. Mm -hmm. Mauna Kai, great word, as we are currently exploring this Mauna Kai. And Sebastian, what's the Hawaiian word for the state fish of Hawaii? The state fish of Hawaii is humuhunukunukuapua'a. <laughs> which is the second longest Hawaiian term, which is behind Lao Wili Wili Nuku Nuku Oi Oi, which is the forcep fish. Love it. <laughs> you go, Sebastian. <laughs> I've always liked the ring of uh, Mount Haleakala mm. since we climbed it in, in Maui in 2004. Haleakala. Well, we didn't climb the whole thing. We drove up most of the way, <laughs> and then we climbed a little bit. <laughs> Haleakala, the house of the rising sun. <laughs> oh, cool. I like that. Yeah. Beautiful place to watch that rising of the sun every day. Well, it's also cool because you can see the big island really well from there. Yeah, yeah. It's probably when that's, since it's active, it's probably really cool to see at night. Yeah, we, al we actually have in the Hawaiian language newspapers accounts of eruptive phases from um, people that were living on Maui. This is like in the 1800s seeing oh, that yeah. beautiful glow of the eruptions yeah. happening across the channel. Which sponge? It's Bridge like nav. Both Can we zoom on this yellow kind of sponge right here? Uh -huh. Go for zoom. I'd like to do a ship move one five uh, meters bearing two zero five. I'm not sure what I'm going for, but there it is. There it is. Correct. is there oh. a shrimp on it? Oh. A little shrimp. It might be time for round six of trying to get this shrimp. <laughs> oh, you look at the shrimp. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yep, this is this shrimp is definitely one of the shrimps we're looking for. It's the same one. Is it really? Yep, it's the same one. <laughs> Just keeps following us around and then evading Every us. Every shift has failed to collect this shrimp. Let's be the first <laughs> fit to win. It. <laughs> Let's see right, if we Jay, can there try. There you him. go. I think we've tried. We definitely we did try. Yeah. One with a parasite on it. I remember. Yeah, but that was like an accidental grab trying to grab this one. God. We're so close to rock o'clock. Oh my god. <laughs> rock o'clock. Rock o'clock. Chris, uh, the left royale is the sponge we're looking at directly right now. Uh, do you want me to call hmm. all stop in that last move? Are you going to try sample? Yeah, probably. This might take take a while. It might take no time at all because we'll probably yeah, swim, through. swim away before we do even get the suction out. Could uh, I put an all stop on that last move? Thank you. Look at it. 
Is it worth uh, it collecting knows. a sponge, Chris, <laughs> or do, should we That's just focus on this shrimp? Oh, that looks so uh, you should swing it off. And most likely this would be going to Slurp 2 if we're able to get it. Slurp 2, I... Slurp 2. We're on flush right now. Look at him. Oh my god. So why do we want to collect this shrimp? Um, it's a species of Labaeus shrimp that is only associated with um, sponges and deep sea soft corals. Um, supposedly, a Japanese, uh, they were found by Japanese scientists on some seamounts near their chain, and we currently are beside them closer to Hawaii. Mm. So we have a scientist who wants to sample them and see how closely related they are. Cool. Go to slurp jar two, right? Two, I. That is the flush jar. Uh, okay. There's one. Two. Oh my gosh. Do you want to push? I think it might be under it. Yeah, you're under it. Can I, I come in with you, Jake? I can see in the still cam. Oh. 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 <gasps> come on. <gasps> yes. Yo, oh my god. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. <laughs> yeah, I was holding my breath. <laughs> oh my god. It's not in the jar yet, though. No, right. there, there you go. go. Sample collected. Right. Sample, so sample collected. 46. I may have... 46. Okay. Yep. Wow. That was impressive. Yes. We probably should swing that jar over to flush or oh, hit that coral. Oh, and I can't let her. I gotta turn off. Oh, that current is just like I just came up and it's just lift off, taking me away. Stow the arm quick. Uh, health check it video. So to finish our uh, conversation we're having before the um, collection, anybody else want to share um, any of their favorite Hawaiian words? My favorite Hawaiian word is kai. Pretty simple, but 
uh, represents the ocean uh, and, and I named my son after after that. Nice, good name, Kai. That's even in our expedition name. It is. Ala Aumoana Kai Uli, the path of the deep sea traveler. Bridge nav. Miss Malia, what's your favorite Hawaiian word? We like oh, to do a, a ship move at one five yeah. meters bearing <laughs> two zero five. I think my favorite is Aloha Aina. Aloha, um, Aloha Aina means deep love mm. for your homeland, for your um, environment. It encompasses um, just this love for everything, including the people, the organisms, um, everything that feeds you. Because Aina means to that which feeds and so when you look at the world as this sustaining like we, we can't survive without our world mm -hmm. and so when we look at it not as an object for consumption or to commodify it but as a relationship knowing that we depend on the environment in order to survive then aloha aina becomes very apparent it's an it's an action. How do you spell it? So aloha, A L O H A, and then aina. There's a okina in front of the a, a kahako over the a, which elongates the vowel. I N A, aloha aina. Mm -hmm. Wait, say after aloha. Say the. Aina. So, do you know what a okina is? Mm -mm. It's like a apostrophe. Uh, it creates like a. Um, it's a. It you you speak the um, word with kind of a clip to it. Okay. And then a with a um, kahako over it, so it elongates is that the, line? the vowel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I. N. A. Okay. Aloha Aina. It's actually Aloha. two words. Um, and it means deep love. Oh, more than that. <laughs> more than deep love. Um, I am considering, I want to get you guys the name. Should we take a Niskin here? Yeah. You think so? I mean, we've seen a lot of coral diversity. And we're seeing a huge amount of these so, And I think, we've, I think we've seen a very big difference in the beginning of the dive, so. Yes, so I say we take a niskin here. Yeah. All right. Let me just put myself in the current. Yeah, can you just hold that heading for a sec? Let me zoom. Makes sense to me. Could do a push in there. Bless you. Yeah. So uh, I think this DNA sample is going to be an amalgamation of <laughs> many. Many fragments coming up this. Yeah, this is gonna have, this is gonna be a pretty dense uh, eDNA sample, I think. But that's good. All right. And this will be sample 47. That's correct. And we're going on that in Niskin 4. Niskin 4. Niskin 4. Uh, you can see all the corals bent over with the current. Yeah. It's just screaming over the top of this. Which one's yeah. 4? Are they. Oh, uh, yeah. Maybe 5 and 6 have been triggered already? 5 and 6 have been triggered. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Is the Niskin bottle named after some, the guy who invented yeah, it? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Mr. Niskin, Dr. Niskin. Mr. Niskin? Oh, this is the... This is Niskin. Okay. These Drank are the out little, of a six uh, 3D liter printers. cylinder. What? Yeah. 3D printer bolt. Like. Oh, is that what, how they're uh, Can you rack me uh -huh. back? 
So we're going for the oh, okay. lighter yellow. Mm. Uh, I'm full, full wide. Steve seems to agree that this is a great spot for a Niskin. Thinking yeah. saying it's denser and more diverse and better for DNA, a real test of the method. So while we're collecting the eDNA sample, could somebody answer? Uh, maybe not the ROV crew because they're so busy, but how is Hercules able to withstand the extreme pressure down, down there? So uh, the ROVs are designed um, with so all of, like the uh, the arm and, and and a lot of other components are hydraulic, and so it, it runs on pressurized oil. So there's no air in it, so it it can't. You it don't? Do? I think I just saw it go. It doesn't no, compress like uh, uh, it, yeah, like it's other things that have air in triggered. it. Triggered. So triggered. the oil is Double fairly checking. non compressible. Um, and then we have syntactic foam, which one, is the two, yellow part on top of Hercules, three, one, which two, is three. heavy. Yep. If you were to pick it up. Triggered. Sample it, number 47. It's, hard, but it's actually buoyant. It's a, it's a foam. It's like a glass foam in a way that in water is actually buoyant. So it gives, it counteracts the weight of uh, Herc's uh, metal components and uh, allows Hercules to be uh, positively buoyant in water. And so once you're stowed, can I do a push into the water yeah, column just of, to see um, the particulates? Technology that, that allows it to be, to it dive deep and also. Um, yeah, operate fluidly in the, in the water. Mahalo, mate. <laughs> so this gives you a, an idea, rough idea, of what's in the water column. And I'm just racking focus closer towards the vehicle continuously. And then going back out and coming forward and pull push. We're so close to <laughs> to rock o'clock. Yeah, we're probably forty-two minutes away. We're, we're, we're probably, I think we're 43 minutes away, actually. No. <laughs> no. Rock o'clock for Val. Uh, she already got a rock. <laughs> but um, my Mimi, my grandma, she's on the live stream right now, and I just wanted to say, hi, hi Mimi, love you. I'm so happy you were able to get on. I know you were at the gym earlier, so. We call one of our grandmothers Mimi. Yeah, I love her. I know you can't see me, but I just did a heart. But uh. <laughs> oh, actually, hold on a second. Hold on, we can fix that. Cam, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> there you go. You're on stream three now. Yeah. <laughs> so. Love you, Mimi. <laughs> And now uh, we'll go back to Brown. Thank you. Somebody'd have to be. We do a ship move, please. One five meters bearing two one zero. Thank you. Sebastian, maybe you can answer this question um, from a class. Uh, Mrs. Blakemore's class, have we discovered any new species on this voyage? Um, that is a good question. We may have or may have not. Um, we won't be able to get a solid ID on whatever we collect or see until usually sometime after the cruise when specialists can review mm -hmm. either the samples that we collected or the footage that we collected. We have some leads on some new, newer species. Um, we've seen the unusual tinafore that may be a new, may consist of a new family of tinafores here in the monument. Um, we've seen an unusual purple nudibranch that we have not observed elsewhere. Um, there are plenty of like possibilities of small amounts of speciation, even in species that we think we know in the deep sea. So the answer is 
we don't know just quite yet. We may not, or may will, may not, but we, there's a good chance we will as well. Okay, well, hopefully that answered your question. Mrs. Blakemore's period two class. Second period? Like, where in the world are they? I assumed when Tori was talking about that Mrs. Blakemore was in North Carolina, but that would be like 1.20 p.m. And that's a little late for second period. Yeah, not sure I, where that, that even, class is. Even the West Coast is a little late. Maybe they're in Guam or Hawaii. Yeah, I don't think the classes have started yet. What time is it now? Uh, Hawaii standard seven, time is 721. Seven yep. yeah. School not in session yet in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. What time does school start? Usually about 8, and some start at 9, depending. High schools normally start long yeah, before everyone bit, else because of the allocation of buses. I mean, the sun's not even we're, up here. We're moving 210, though, right? Is it a circle-ish right uh, yeah. in front of us? We'll Is it just a break in the rock? Circle. Yeah. It's weird, right under the lasers. Almost oh, looks, right here? Looks like a break in the rock, yeah. Yeah, it, it looks like it could have been broken because we're getting towards, like, where the, it starts to go down slope, so I yeah. would expect a more, like, breakage of sheet flows or low bait flows. I can't really tell from this far away, but... That's okay. A volcano I've done a bunch of work on has areas where there, there was these large lava pools that then cleared out, but you have these columns remaining. Whoa. Uh, they were very cool. Where? Uh, axial seamount, uh, about 400 kilometers off the uh, Washington, Oregon coast. Oh, wow. Uh, at the spreading center on the Juan de Fuca and Pacific Plate boundary. That, is it, is it massive? Uh, yeah, they're pretty big. There's yeah. some remarkable imagery from there. Wow. Like, you easily get an RV down there, no problem. That's so cool, especially because, yeah, that, that plate is always is moving. Without <laughs> getting pushed off. I did a little bit of um, trying to do some photogrammetry mapping of the ashes hydrothermal vent field on Axial Volcano. It's very interesting because I was doing a mapping of the area prior to it being run over by a yeah. lava flow and restructuring the seafloor and everything. There's yeah. constant reshaping of the seafloor over an axial volcano. It's also connected to the American Cabled Ocean Observatory. Uh, and they even have sacrificial instruments down in the caldera for it's the next eruption. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they're live streamed. Could and, you? And they're actually out there servicing the observatory right now. Could you send yeah. an ROV to an active seamount? Yeah. Yeah? I have uh, a clip from Jason with of a volcano erupting. Wow. Do you think we should pull this way? Mm. I don't know if this is sustainable. Said, do like, you think we should pull this way? Yeah. That's I, I can, so cool. I, can, <laughs> I just, I can't hold heading if I'm like 90 degrees to the current without getting pushed off. I need to be facing the current. Okay, so let's try, uh, I'm gonna try and move it. 190. Getting back under. Something coming up on your lower right. Sebastian just had a fantastic rhyme. He said, Tick tock, it's rock o'clock. Oh my god. That's so good. 
That's so good, oh my gosh. Where did you write that? Oh, he just typed it down. Oh. I don't know why you didn't want to say it. Because I didn't want to say it. <laughs> oh you say it. TikTok is rocket clock. <laughs> First we gotta find a seafloor. Yeah. <laughs> okay, first we need to find a rock. Yeah. Uh, wow. yeah. We're gonna have some changes to our dive plan, I believe. The scurry yeah. is yeah. not gonna allow us to do our traverse across the slope. So uh, I'm just gonna zoom out for a minute here. Watch lead. Um, uh, yeah. <coughs> So the original thought process between waypoint two and three was essentially traversing a long contour. You want to come down and reapproach the bottom here, so we get an idea of what we're looking at. Put that uh, high pack out on sat three for those trying to track at home. So near this this area of waypoint three oh. is in the what looks like a big slow failure at some point that just kind of fell off the side of the mountain. Um, so I think geologically there's interest in traversing from waypoint two down to waypoint three and trying to see what that oh, looks like. Go. But the, the reality of the situation now is we get a really strong current ah. from the south. Yeah. See if I can hold it. Which would be, it's hard to move across contour as it is, like with sure. good conditions yeah. and with us headlong current. Um, Maybe the pilots could weigh in on the feasibility of that or not. I am 100% lateral to the left right now. Uh, so. I'm holding, but. Yeah. When we got blown off of the station. Um, <coughs> so waypoint four is more at the top of this next ridge feature. You can see it's got maybe more of a. <laughs> It's a really steep slope, and then there's sort of a ridge line mm -hmm. that leads to waypoint four. Um, so anyway, just something to think about. We'll try to find bottom near waypoint two over here, and um, see if we can get that rock sample. Thank you. Or we might need a different approach moving forward on the dive. Yeah, I think... Um I don't know, like, it's if, we, if it's a southward current? Yeah. I wonder if we could go up the other side rather than on this um, failure. Yeah, so I guess we could either try to move up the steep slope to the ridge. Oh, yeah. Um, Maybe. But, but we're probably going to get pushed laterally the whole time. So we'd probably end up more kind of on this okay. side of it. Yeah, but that's okay. Or we could try to fly up but and reacquire bottom. Like yeah, that would be, that is going to be my next recommendation. The question, though, is do you think that current's going to still be up on that ridge? I mean, it, it may not be because it's um, it won't be along the slope anymore. We may want to just pull up and, and acquire, like, go to waypoint four and then drop down. That might be the easiest and quickest thing to do rather than fight it the whole way and just skip waypoint three entirely. Because, I mean, that sort of slope, we're not going to be able to really see much. We're just going to be pulling up the whole time. Does that make sense? I, I think so, but... Um, <laughs> I mean, we saw a lot coming up that slope. Yeah, but this That's is the end steeper, we isn't it? Yeah, maybe not. Mm. It'd yeah, definitely be it. slow. I don't think there's any question Well, I'd say... That. I say let's just skip waypoint three, aim for waypoint four, and just you see mean if waypoint we can. Two. What? You mean, did you say skip waypoint three? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If, if we skip waypoint three, yeah. we can just get something up here, or like yeah. along this edge, because that's still where the slope failure is. Yeah. See, like. For depth. Like right here. Yeah. Well, first. If we chose to fly to that, we'd have to pull up to about 1,400 meters. Ooh. Maybe well, no, I, I mean, I mean, stay on the bottom and just go to waypoint four, just skip three. Okay, and try to traverse up that steep slope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we could try. Maybe if we go along directly or the, you know, off the contours, we can pull it off. That would put us more over here. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, that'd be, probably be the whole next watch. <laughs> yep. But I think that, I think it's totally fine to skip the, the third waypoint. Sounds good. So for those who are joining us, we are currently in the Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. Um, pretty much up at the northwest so boundary. Can we drop down to the seafloor here? Yeah, we can go down on the winch and drop down. About 14 meters altitude right now. Okay. Hannah, did we want to get a rock here if we see one? Okay. Yes, yeah, please. we'd like to have rock sample here if possible. All right, we'll drop down, see if we can find a suitor. Otherwise, we're going to leave watch without Hannah getting a rock, and that would be sad. Yeah. She's been waiting patiently for three dives. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yeah. But we have, like, in the time that we were on those other dives, we did, like, saw open all the other ones, so. Yeah. That was fun. Which is fun. Because, um, yeah. Derek, I'm wondering if, if, if we're still under the, we want to only spend 24 hours-ish on this seamount. Um, I wonder if, uh, Daniel would consider doing a like a drop dive after this after we get samples off and just uh, getting a, a quick look at the top for the trawling concepts. We had sort of mentioned that. Yeah. Um, in dive planning. I, yep. I, I wouldn't if, if we decide to leave this area and not have an idea of what the top looks like for that purpose. But we can discuss that. Sounds good. Unfortunately, 800 meters doesn't take too long to descend. Are we still going down? Yeah, we're going down. I think <laughs> we're <laughs> on a wall. Oh, yeah, we are. So, maybe I should do a <coughs> ship move yeah, directly we, no, west. Yeah, come off the, <laughs> the, the apron here. Is that right? That's not the right word. Pull the ship, uh, uh, 270. Rocks here? Uh, I would need to be a little closer because I can't tell how big these See, are. See, this is this is off the, the the flat part though. We're on the slope. Oh, okay, well then keep you can keep going. Yeah, let's let's move a yeah. bit more towards waypoint two if we can. Yeah. All right. Let's pull. Uh, let's do like. Do 20 meters at 270. 270. 270. Bridge nav. Please do a move 20 meters bearing 270. Thank you. Man, four hour watches go by so fast. It's supposed Versus to be yeah. 18, 18 hour watches. I was about to say, yeah, like 24 hours. I feel like you were really on like a three day watch. Yeah, well, thankfully we had some transit time between mm -hmm. them and some mapping. So I got, I did actually get rest between the three dives, which is nice. Bit of a marathon though.
No, now it's rock o'clock. We just hit like a wave. It is raining. Is it really? Yeah. Huh. Might affect our internet connection for oh, those great. of you viewing from home. Yeah. Yeah, gone right into it. We really got lucky with those. Yeah. <laughs> we had gorgeous weather. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that little roller that just came through would have put, probably put us over our comfort zone on our tension. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a large part of me was expecting that to happen and it, it didn't. Yeah. I was uh, really just watching the thing like, oh, we're going gonna, we're gonna to be done and it just never happened. I was very surprised. Okay, so I'm rejoining again. I heard we might be looking for some rock samples, Hannah. Yeah. <laughs> right after waypoint two, but it's a struggle moving over there because of the current. Mm -hmm. So they're battling current right now. Yeah, I keep having to turn into the current. Mm -hmm. You could say they're fighting against the clock. The what? The TikTok rock clock. TikTok We're just trying to delay till Val gets here so Hannah can walk away in shame. <laughs> yeah, and then Val can get another rock. Yeah. Hannah, well, you'll probably stay up here anyway, if that happens. <gasps> I don't know. <sighs> Breakfast is so, <laughs> ah. <laughs> so good. I, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm like having to pick between whatever I can eat with maple syrup and <laughs> <laughs> having rock o'clock, I don't know. I feel like Super the maple decision. syrup will win. Wow. <laughs> I hope they have mushrooms for breakfast. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. I hope they have ice cream for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we have more fruit. That honeydew has been nice. The pineapple has been nice. Bridge nav. <laughs> this conversation just went like totally Please do strange. Move direction. Two zero meters <laughs> bearing two five five. You know it's the underwatch. Everyone's hungry. Yeah. I've been hungry since Thank you. 5 a.m. I, I need to do a better job of like eating something before I come on watch. But well, there's lots of raisin bran. Well, <laughs> I looked at the all the bread was gone. And that's usually what I grab. That was his fault. Once again, I'm living that balsamic Italian lifestyle <laughs> in my head. <laughs> Yeah. When we sail out of uh, Sydney, British Columbia on uh, Vancouver Island in Canada, uh, we uh, take on bread from Portofino Bakery. Oh my gosh. It's so good. And there's like eight different kinds of bread. Oh my God. So good. I think bread is like my favorite food, honestly. <laughs> Do you think you're going to add stuff like yeah, my... to the bread you're getting here or just? Just the bread. <laughs> Just the bread. Okay. I think my favorite meal would be, you know, some good bread, some rice, some mashed potatoes, and stuffing. So all oh, wow. starch. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Comfort food. See, my Irish fruits. Starchaholic. <laughs> Yesterday at uh, cookie time, that little. I don't even know how to describe what that was. Like the, the bread with like the chocolate at the bottom. Yeah, it's like that a. Nice. It's it was like, like a, a coconut. Yeah. yeah. Chocolate. Well, I love the, the crunchy chocolate at the bottom. Yeah. Then I got a piece that didn't have it. I was like really sad. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, as everybody can tell, we are all hungry as we come to the end of our watch. Oh. Yep. Are we almost to the flat ground? Mm, yeah, we're getting there. Okay. About 20 minutes away. Yeah, exactly oh 19 God. minutes away. <laughs> 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 I'm just 
just realized what would be happening in 20 minutes. <laughs> I mean, they'll probably be here uh, in the that's next That's an urchin. 10. I haven't seen one of those yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Look. Oh, look at that. A little baby. <laughs> are we looking for a rock or are we looking for nodules? At this a rock. Point? We're looking for I a mean, I guess we could take a rock <laughs> over here if it's easy. That looks cool, whatever that is. It's a sea urchin. Sea urchin? Yeah. Over zoom. Aww. It's lonely. Very pretty. All right. Very pretty. First Very one I've seen. Pointy. Yeah. Have any of you guys ever received an urchin hug? A tattoo? Have you seen what? An urchin oh. hug. What is that? No. So if you go to like an aquarium and they have a touch pool of sea urchins, you can put your finger in between the spines and they'll close around your finger. So that's called a sea urchin hug. Oh my gosh, that's scary. Yeah, but it doesn't hurt you at all. It just generally tries like to grab you thinking that it's like, are you food? Are you plant matter? I feel like they shouldn't put sea urchins in a touch tank. <laughs> Just saying. Eh. That's a big that's a big risk they're playing with. Well the ones in the Puget Sound have shorter spines, so it's not like mm. they're non venomous from what I understand. Unlike here in Hawaii where the Vana are definitely if you get stung by those you got you gotta hurt for a bit. Oh, they hurt. You step on those? Yeah, Ouch. I've stepped on one. Yeah, no thanks. And I had to like soak it, soak my foot in like warm salt water. And then I needed, I like got a, I think it was while I was on vacation. So I used like, um, what is the eyebrow, like the tweezers? eyebrow tweezers? Yeah, I used those to take out the, uh, the sea urchin stuff. And it Gross. was not fun. Yeah. That does not sound pleasant. Nope, it was absolutely horrible. <laughs> oh. These rocks aren't to your liking? No, I'm looking. She's, I'm she's looking. looking. <laughs> I'm looking at these two or three. But. Do you want to poke them? Yeah. <laughs> she's just like, just 16 minutes, I need to get something. Well, they they look promising. Yeah. Is there enough context, you think, for them? Enough what? Context. Like we know where they came from? Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I love watching your face. <laughs> Just asking. Um, no, but they look like pillow basalts. <laughs> okay, that works. I don't know, like, where exactly they came from. Oh, gosh. It's definitely... Oh, my gosh. Cemented, huh? Oh! The manganese crust just, like, came off of it. Hmm. What? Recently in our, one of our good samples, I know this doesn't really depend, but our good That's sample- It's not going we, anywhere. Oh my God. <laughs> I think it's harsh. Oh wow. It's very cemented in there. Jeez, it did not look like that to me. I don't me. think any of these are free. <gasps> what about the oh one that God. looks kind of perched on another rock over there to the right? Are you talking about this one? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I was just thinking, I don't know. I don't know. What... Nope. No. Nope. Oh my god. Okay, wow. we can just go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm nope. getting too upset with the, these rocks over here. They just don't want to go. No. They want to stay. On yeah, the and I don't want to force them. No, please don't. I don't, don't. want to force them. That would be problematic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now that we're 
nearing end of watch and still in rock hunt mode, it's probably safe for me to tell Sebastian to press control and four huh? on your keyboard. Because What's that do? on his keyboard that should give him access to another channel or telestrator? Up to a flatter spot. Yep. Where is the control button? The do left control and the number four, the Arabic numeral four. Oh, oh. On your keyboard. On his oh. keyboard. Oh, oh yeah. my keyboard. I was looking at the. <laughs> I know. I was like, control what are you doing? Control four. Ooh. Oh. Oh. And well, it's a speed remember was. Then yeah. if you hold down control left control alt and a alpha control Go. alt a left two zero yep. meters bearing two six zero that'll take you back to the last computer you were using you. control alt, alt a a yeah it's going nowhere uh should have taken you back to capture he's just on the home screen yeah of uh, it says finger works. Yeah, yeah. So can, uh, hit control alt X and see if that does anything. That just takes me back to the adder. Yeah, channel. yeah. So that's where. So if you select capture now. Capture now. If you select the capture computer to oh, do yeah. like the data logging mm -hmm. job. Oh yeah, I'm back. And now press control alt A. Control alt A. It's not toggling you. Nope. Okay. I'll have to try that shift change. What theoretically should it do? Take you back to the last computer you were on. Hmm. Let you toggle between two computers. When you go uh, Alt Control X, does it say Admin oh. Logout in the top right? Um, yeah. Okay. Making sure you're logged in. How about this rock in front of us? You want to sample <laughs> that? <laughs> I wish. 2,200 sub-samples. Yeah. There are tons of corals. Actually, there's a part of the... Uh, Endeavor hydrothermal vent field in Canada that uh, was cut off and is now, I think, in the Muse American Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C. Very large portion. Yeah, uh, Keith Tambori did that. Big Keith. Now medium Keith. Uh, he was uh, recently took his family there to visit it in the museum. <coughs> So I think this ridge, in reality, is a lot narrower than it looks in the multi-beam bathy. I was wondering that. I mean, it kind of looks like you're right on it, and it's falling off to either side. Yeah. But maybe this is just a smaller feature on a larger. We got some low bait flow. And not much pillow. This looks like pride rock. I can see that. From Lion King. There's a feature in Atalanta sonar, but it's like 20, 40, almost 60 meters. There's a big coral right there. Mm -hmm. Like 0.7 meters across, maybe? So, what's the plan now? Well, I think we need to traverse in this direction along here. 
Because if we're going to have to go up. Oh, that's what Atlanta's seeing too. That's some higher, some peaks. Okay. So let's do. We could probably do a pretty significant move here. I mean. Yeah. It. <clears throat> what do you think? 25? Yeah. That's probably good. 25 at. And by the end of that move, we'll be watch handover, so we can just call that one move and. Okay. 25 at 215. Right. Is it the right time? Yeah. That Atlanta view looks good. Bridge now. Right now. Are you going to change that? At the end, yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let's, uh, Can we please do a move 25 meters just that bearing dark two area one just five. to the right of that tiny coral in front of us. Thank just you. Just a rock sitting there. Looks like it, but it's too tiny to collect. And it's very dark. Yeah. Uh, how it's did, very. It looks very polished. How did Actually, that get I can't there? Yeah, it's just. It's. I think part it's just part flow. of the flow, the low yeah. flow. And I think it's smooth because of the current. Like shiny. Or looking okay. polished. So, as we get ready for our uh, shift change coming up in about eight minutes. Um, just wanted to uh, share that we are in Papahanao Mokuakea Marine National Monument and Aina Akua, the realm of the gods for Kanaka O'ivi or the native Hawaiian people. We are so grateful for the, the beautiful biodiversity that's been re being revealed to us. First time human eyes have seen this ecosystem and um, just amazing organisms that make their home in the depths of the sea in, in Kanaloa, our god of the sea. Wow, look at those spirals bent over. So we mahalo those, uh, those beautiful organisms that are being shown to us. And we mahalo this place. Papahanaumokuakea, named after our Earth Mother, our Sky Father, and the union that created the Hawaiian archipelago. Sounds like we got some folks arriving for watch change. So you might hear some of us hop off in a little bit here. Mm. Watch change of video. So aloha to all of you for joining us. And ahui ho until we meet again.
Okay, mahalo folks for bearing uh, with us. We're just getting settled in. So just a few more moments as we switch over from, um, switch over to the eight to 12 watch. Good morning. 8 to 12 watch is getting settled in. <clears throat> what a location to settle in. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. This looks like a biologist's paradise. Awe-inspiring. Ritigorgia, some heavy corallium. Uh, those paragorgias that we're seeing? Um, or metallo? Wait, what? Metallogorgia. I don't know. Um. No, we we've definitely we've definitely got some. We've got a diversity of different taxa. Uh, it does look definitely. like some some paragorgids and corallids, and wow, I do love those spiraling wow. erudigorgids mm -hmm. too. It's a really um, dense. Uh, yeah, it's probably one of the the more dense colonies of uh, uh, erudigorgids I've seen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, this is awesome. Are we? How are we all? So are we all settled in? Seen. Can we? Can we do some zooms? Or, or, yeah, that'd be awesome. Wow. Aloha kakahiaka kako. Good morning, everyone. Good morning from the Exploration Nautilus. We are currently in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. And if you're tuning in, you're seeing the beautiful footage that we're seeing. Mahalo Amber and our ROV pilots, Robert and Zachary, Zachariah, Kalamai, excuse me. <laughs> um, but we are on a unnamed sea mount in the Ala Omoana Kaiuli, the uh, Voyage of the Deep Sea Traveler, Exploration, Expedition. Um. Uh, all right. Looks like we're seeing some basket stars here, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looks like there's several of them. And some of those um, <clears throat> crabs. Can we zoom in? Gorgeous, wow. Yeah, those are stunning. Oh, awesome, thank you. That's wonderful. Gorgeous. All right, Great. so, so what I heard from the, uh, oh, sorry, yeah. Oh, I was gonna ask to shift to another coral over to the right. Go ahead and do that. Now that we've gotten a a pretty good zoom on that one just sort of i'm jumping the gun a little yeah. bit my apologies <laughs> no you're great you're <laughs> great um i'm just not sure if the last watch got a good zoom on a lot of these so <clears throat> be interesting. yeah thank you yeah, i've seen some little brittle stars making mm -hmm. their way around i think i saw some basket stars further down too Do we have any more leash? Very hard to get on here. Is what? Yeah, it's because I don't have any leash. <laughs> <laughs> this dog's at the end of the chain. We all know how excited dogs get about walking. <laughs> Herc, Herc wants to go explore. <laughs> The last watch also informed me that there's a pretty strong current that's been making progress pretty slow. Yeah, yeah that's what I've heard. Yeah, mm -hmm. unfortunately, we still have our uh, problem we're trying to get rid of with the hydraulic falling on its face if we have to drive hard. 
I see. Okay. It, uh, it hits a relief valve and then you lose all your pressure. Oh, mm. it makes oh, okay. you look like you're an amateur. Oh, <laughs> no. like I'm an amateur. <laughs> Never. I'm either not awake yet or that's what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> nah, we, we know that that's not you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Get get Robert some more coffee. Let's see. Let's see what happens. <laughs> surprise, surprise watch team. I'm tuning in from the studio. <laughs> Good morning, studio. I'll mm -hmm. be doing some ship to shores this morning, but. Uh, with you all in spirit. All right, have fun with those. Thank you. Oh, wow. I do love seeing the basket stars all sprayed out like that. Mm -hmm. Looks oh, like that and one's even been around a, a while. Yeah, there's even a, a brittle star doing it too, it looks like. That's kind of interesting. <clears throat> well, this morning we have viewers mm -hmm. tuning in from the United States, Canada, yeah. the UK, Denmark, Australia, Philippines, zoom on this coral as well. Netherlands, Japan, Italy, Greece, Finland, and Spain. Um, I think we're all settled in. I can start off with our introductions this morning. Aloha, kakahiaka kako, o mahinalani kavaleri ko inoa no o ahu mai ao. Hello, everyone. Good morning um, from Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. Okay, I gotta get going. Okay. This has been excellent, thank you. Sounds great, let's get a move yeah. on. My name is Mahina and we are on board the exploration vessel Nautilus. Thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to exploring with you today. And All right, so um, Bal Finlayson, uh, the eight to 12 watch lead in the back row. Uh, I am a postdoc specializing in uh, isotope geochemistry of seamounts uh, uh, like the one that we're on right now, and I work at uh, the University of Maryland. Um, yeah, we're, I, I hear we are uh, having a lot of fun with uh, corals overnight, but some overall very slow progress. So we're gonna we're, we're gonna talk things over here a little later and uh, decide what we may want to do with the dive plan. So mm -hmm. yeah, that right. makes sense. Oh wait. It's really quite a landscape down here. Oh, it is, isn't it? It's amazing. I got up this morning, was kind of hoping to see a really nice sunrise, but uh, things got a little brighter out, and it looks like the sun's probably up now, looking at the outer cameras, but... Uh, and looks like we lost our position, too. Uh-oh. And we were greeted with a little bit of rain and some sea haze this morning, but the seas are still very calm. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a gorgeous morning. It is. All that gray around you. Yeah, we've been lucky with the weather. It's been pretty gentle. Mm -hmm. I always think of rainy days as a reminder to rest. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I've had so much sun the last few days. Huh. How fast are we traveling? That looks like we're kind of clipping along there. Um, in theory, we should be actually heading into... So are they losing position? The current, because we're heading south right now. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we haven't put in a ship move since yeah, we've been so on, Yeah, so I think you might have lost position there. heading off into blue water. Ooh, All right. I think what it is is that it's flatter here. I think we may be able to come down a bit because this is the yeah, top of this little ridge down. here. Well, we were on a wall just a right. second ago. No, right. Should be a little flatter down here beyond that, hopefully. But I'm, I'm heading away from it here. Yeah. Yeah, I'll reset that once you said that one. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not what I meant to type there. Virginia. Oh, yeah. Our lovely coral queen. Would you <laughs> yeah. like to introduce yourself and what you're hoping to see on this dive of this unnamed seamount? 
Um, yeah, so um, hi everyone, I'm Virginia. I'm a PhD student at Florida State University. Um, I happen to study a lot uh, of seamount yeah, communities in the region. I don't know. Um, yeah. Which is really exciting, and so to see this diversity is just so exciting. It's a, it's a little bit of a, a depth that I uh, um, don't always get to see. Which are we is trying really to go amazing. south, though? <clears throat> and so it's it's pretty amazing to see the diversity of corals at this depth, and as well as the abundance. Um, it speaks a lot to the, the habitat here, which is so amazing. But so. the ship's going that way. What a wonderful way to start the morning. Sure is. Mm -hmm. Exactly, absolutely. A little fireworks to greet the day. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wow, mm -hmm. look at that view. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, wow. Those are... That's a lot. Is that all coral? I can't tell yeah, you. Yeah, those are rocks. Those uh -oh. are rocks. All right. <laughs> I got excited. Yeah. Oh, you like rocks. <laughs> I like rocks. <laughs> we like all things in here. Rocks are yeah. homes. For <laughs> yeah, I, th I think it was the contrast between the rocks and the sediment that had had our, uh, had us a little perked up yeah. back mm -hmm. here. Sometimes it looks like a lot of corals. Yeah. I mean, it is. It's still wonderful. What a view. There's still lots of corals there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Speaking of liking things, it's Daniel Kinzer, SCF, Honolulu, Oahu, and. Uh, self-proclaimed biggest fan of the 8 to 12 watch, <laughs> the greatest watch <laughs> in the world. And, uh, oh yeah, we've got some metallic watches there too. Excited to be here with you all. Oh, and look at under the rock here oh. on the left. Oh, oh, yeah. just, there's a bunch of them there. Not that we have to view it, but it's just really interesting all that we have. Yeah, it just must be a good place to eat. Yeah. Kukui, our lovely light. Oh, hi everybody, my name is Kukui, I'm from Maui, and I'm one of the data loggers on board, and I am so um, happy and blessed to be here with you all today. Mahalo. Mahalo, Kukui. Always a pleasure working with you folks in the back row, and then if we have oh, time wow. in the front row. Good morning. Uh, my name is Catalina Rubiano. I am a master's student mm -hmm. at the University of South Florida's College of Marine Science, and I am serving here as a navigator, uh, coordinating movements between the ships and the ROVs. Awesome. Would it be possible to zoom in here or here? Yeah, can we zoom here? in? Yeah. Steve has entered the conversation, or will soon, so. Oh, wonderful. Good morning, Steve. As well as our uh, friends uh, oh, Chris nice. and Asako in science chat, they're going to help us out uh, with the, uh, some of the biology and some of, uh, some of the uh, IDs mm -hmm. that we want to work on. And uh, there's some of our science ashore team. That's awesome. Yeah, we couldn't do it without our scientists ashore. No, absolutely. Especially with a geologist in charge. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, this is stunning. It looks like a, a large group of different types of corals on, yeah, there's on this. A couple different kinds of sponges, too, here and there. Oh, yeah. I was wondering if that was. Oh, yeah, there's that stock sponge. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah that's wonderful. That's interesting. Yeah, so we think that these uh, fan forming corals kind of grow in a direction where they can catch a lot of current. So it's kind of interesting hey, seeing the orientation know. on those. Kind of facing downwards. So you got like mm -hmm. current kind of doing something like this. And we're pretty close here to um, kind of the ledge there, yeah. Atlanta, so maybe we should keep yeah. on heading upwards. Yeah. Possible sponge ID, that stock sponge was Colophagus. Oh, uh, great. Tentatively ID'd. Am I in the wrong, oh, I'm in the wrong chat. 
Coming up. I was like, I don't see any of these things. Now I get it. Coffee's still kicking in for us. <laughs> Yeah, so we're pretty close oh, to waypoint wow. two in today's dive, uh, moving a little bit slowly due to some uh, stronger currents along the side of the seamount. So uh, we'll uh, try to keep heading uphill, and you know, if uh, worst comes to worst, we'll uh, we'll have to modify our, our dive plan a little bit, potentially skip a waypoint so that we can try to get on top and look at some of that uh, uh, trawling damage that we're interested in. Yeah, this is pretty amazing. We've got <clears throat> several ritogorchas, some primnoids, and, and chrysogorchas. Mushroom corals. Yeah, corallids, paragorgia. Bunch All of these sponges. sponges. Oh, that's a big sponge, too. Wow. Um, this is wild. Wow, it has, it's been a while since I've seen... Uh, a coral um, a garden, a coral sponge garden that's so diverse like this. This is pretty amazing. It is. Honestly, mm -hmm. this is part of the reason I like some of these steep, <laughs> steeply, uh, these steep polyforming, uh, mm -hmm. cliff forming uh, uh, sides here. Um, it's not just the rocks. It, it, you know. All right. So where are we headed? Moves here, but um, right, right. Dr. Val, uh, considering the topography, I imagine this uh, it's not all that uh, surprising that we're dealing with strong currents, yeah, or stronger than what we sometimes see on flatter bottoms. Is it, does that make sense, or is that just in my mind that we would, you know, expect uh, water to be wrapping around these steep formations a little bit more quickly? You know, that's a good question. I'm not really sure. I've, I've seen some kind of steeper stuff on uh, other dives where there, I, I don't recall there being a strong current, but um, th things could be just right with uh, what some of these deep currents are doing versus the orientation of this, uh, this uh, poly, this underwater poly. But uh, it's, it's possible that uh, we may have somebody in science chat uh, help us answer that too. But since this is a large, uh, you know, this is our first time ever laying eyes on this seamount as uh, human beings. So uh, it's it's really hard to, uh, you know, we just don't know what we're what we're going to encounter on this, and that definitely includes deep currents. presence that current is um, as much as it might be uh, interfering with our plans a little bit it's uh, definitely helping the corals and the sponges thrive around mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. all right we are just under 2,000 meters so we've gone upward uh, almost 600 meters since start of dive. So, oh wow, this is fascinating. So we are making, we are making progress. It's just uh, mostly mm -hmm. vertical, not so much lateral. So. Yeah. Wow. How are we doing with the tether? Would it be possible to get some zooms on? Yeah, I'm moving in already. Right. Awesome. Oh, Thank that you. is a spectacular yeah. sponge. It'd be uh, particularly of interest would be the sponge and the coral next to it. A video, can we zoom in? Wow. Oop. That and I did wow. have a cap lock. Stunning. That's amazing. That is. That's one of the one of the cool things about these sponges. They it's patterns within patterns 
have been patterns, uh, you know, very reminiscent <coughs> of uh, like fractal geometry. Mm. Yes. Wow, that is stunning. Um, okay, we're we're discussing the sponge back here, so. Uh, hang out a moment. Victoria, what are these what are these sponges pulling from their environment to, to build these structures? What's the material that these sponges are <coughs> are made of? Um uh, yeah, well, uh, these sponges are made of, um, they're actually called glass sponges um, because they're, they have these silica um, spicules that they create, which is so amazing. They're very sharp and um, pointy. All right. So cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it is, it is pretty fascinating, and the, and the forms they create is um, pretty stunning. Very stunning indeed, yeah. Mahalo, Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry, still waking up. <laughs> you did it last night and I didn't really catch it. So. <laughs> I get it at least uh, once a cruise. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Apologies, mm -hmm. Hey, mm -hmm. No. Yeah, this is stunning. I was in the studio earlier and um, we saw that the previous watch had collected an opaya shrimp sample. Mm -hmm. Are we aware of any other samples that have been collected throughout the evening or the other watches? Kukui would be, are you busy? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so we collected an Athamastes. We have um, one pohaku from our, from our last watch. We also collected a primnoid fragment. And um, like the, we collected the opai, like you said, mm -hmm. and a piece of a Faraday sponge as well. And we also were able to get a couple more uh, Niskin bottle samples. Awesome. Cool. Nice. Are both of those uh, over colonies, or do we have a background water sample? Um, I can go check on that. In okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No worries. Um, Are yeah, we at full just zoom? making sure we know what what yeah, we do and fine. don't have. Yeah, the last water sample I was collected That's was it. about oh, an awesome hour though. ago. Thank you. Okay. Maximum zoom engaged. <laughs> Maximum cool beans. Zoom. Wow, yes, mahalo, kukui. Awesome. Thank you so much for all of that information. Thank you, you can zoom out. Okay. All right, shall we start Let's moving see. uphill some more? Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. Wow, that is gorgeous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've seen a couple of that I'm not sure we've gotten a really good zoom on, so I'm keeping an eye out for that as well. Okay. Yeah. Now hopefully one shows up for us uh, exactly between ship's moves. <laughs> <laughs> they do do that sometimes. Mm -hmm. All right, sounds like the Primnoid fragment collected oh, earlier was right. a Peristinella. Oh, maybe we did get a good look at some of these. Into Asako. That's awesome. Robert, do you want me to get us to move more from yeah. where we yeah. yeah. If we're here for a bit, I could get a zoom on um, this coral.